morning, church, and welcome back to Nathan's Notes. It's good to be with you on this Wednesday morning. Well, just lost the one I was going to talk about, so let's do this one. Uh, this is from Matthew 6, 8. It says, Do not be like them. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask them. And that's from Matthew 6, 8. And this is the, uh, the devotional for it. And it says, The kitchen phone jarred Jody's thoughts. I'll be there as soon as I can, she said, turning off the bubbling stew. Hurriedly, she hung up. Come on, Tim, she said. Let's go pick up your sister. Her daughter would be waiting outside in 30-degree weather following the school choir's rehearsal. Both mother and son shivered as they pulled the car out of the driveway. The heater had finally begun to blow warm air as they rounded a corner and headed up a back street toward the school. Just ahead, under a street light, they spotted a small brown and white dog lying motionless. The headlights lit up the dog as Jody, drove, as Jody slowly drove around the animal. Starting up the hill, she glanced in the rearview mirror. It moved, she said. Son, that dog is alive. She pulled the car over, jumped out, running back. Tears filled her eyes as she allowed the injured animal to smell her hand. Go get help, she shouted. There at that house. Tim raced up to the nearest home and banged on the door. The man who answered, feel full of being bitten by the dog, refused to help and closed the door. When her son explained to her what had happened, she prayed about what to do next. Although her daughter was waiting in front of the school and was probably cold, she was torn by the idea of leaving the dog alone. It was so helpless. Of the few cars that traveled that back street, none would stop. Then, as if God had heard her unspoken prayer, a black sport utility vehicle drove up, and out climbed a man wearing a green medical smock. After checking the injured dog, he said he'd be glad to take it in for treatment. It turned out he worked for the local vet in town. On reflection, Jody knew she had felt the real presence of God on that back street late on a cold winter night, when the exact person she and the dog needed appeared. How comforting to know that the Lord hears our prayers and answers them even before we speak the words. God cares deeply for all his creatures, even injured dogs. And the quote from today is from Andrew Murray, and it says, Beware in your prayer, above everything, of limiting God, not only by unbelief, but by fancying that you don't know what he can do. <laughs> so this reminds me of a story, and it's not my story, though we were given permission to share it, but uh, I won't name his name. Uh, mainly because, if I'm truthful, I don't really remember it anymore. But this was a story that was shared when a bunch of us pastors get together. And it, by the way, just in case you don't know, that if you take a bunch of pastors and put them together, especially around food, they're going to do what they call talk for a little bit. Uh, and when we talk for a little bit, a little bit can be 15 minutes, and a little bit can be five hours. But the great thing is, is that when pastors talk for a little bit, the 15 minutes and the five hours feels about feels like it's about the same amount of time. So this is a story that came out of that. So uh, my friend was at a family reunion. I may have told this story before, but I don't remember. And the kids were out playing in the heat of the day, and they were playing with water guns and things like that. And he had, I believe it was a niece who was four, five, six years old, something like that, who'd been out playing and uh, came inside and told her mother that she was tired. And my friend and I were going through licensing school at this time, so we were brand new uh, to this whole idea of being pastors. And uh, the family reunion went on and on, and the little girl had just taken a long nap on the couch, and when it came time to leave, uh, they went to wake the little girl up on the couch, and they could not. And they yelled and they shook her and they put cold water on her and she would not wake up and somebody said we should probably call 911 and somebody said well you know i'll call him uh i'll call him bob bob's here bob why don't you say a prayer for us and bob admitted to me you know it, it kind of shamed him that the idea of praying about the situation never really popped in his head and he goes i didn't i didn't really feel like praying i'm thinking we should really call 911 about this situation and he goes, but you know, I'm, I'm a newly, newly minted pastor. Uh, this is what I'm supposed to do. He goes, so he goes, I kind of just rambled off this prayer of Lord, you know, we don't know what's going on, but 
we pray that you just do something to help her and you know in your power and for your glory amen he goes and i wasn't expecting anything i was trying to get the prayer over with so that we could call the ambulance and he goes you know the moment i said all men the girl woke up and it's he goes out of everybody else i was the one that was stunned the most because i didn't expect anything to happen and of course the girl was taken to the hospital and everything was fine they don't know what it was but he said it's amazing to understand sometimes that god works in such powerful ways that even when we may not believe that anything good can come out of this God still works the little girl woke up everything was fine even though the prayer was a hurried prayer just because it felt like it was a requirement sometimes I think in our prayer life like that quote says we can limit God uh, there is a series of books that I've read and listened to over and over again and if you're ever looking for a really good series of books it's not violent or anything it's, it's really good it's called the Mitford series and it follows this little country priest uh, and an Episcopal who's been Episcopalian working in this little country community and of course they get into all adventures and all this kind of stuff but it's really good but he always says with his congregation when they come to him with a problem then let's pray the prayer that never fails and this statement has stuck with me and the prayer that we can always pray that never fails is this Lord your will be done Lord your will be done because at that point in time, we're, in, we're saying, Lord, I don't know how it can be fixed. I don't see how any good can come from this. I don't understand how any outcome can come from it. So, Lord, you act in the enormity of your wisdom, in the enormity of your power. I entrust it to you. So when it comes to our prayer life sometimes, I, I know, especially with, you know, the year that shall not be named <laughs> and everything that's going on. That sometimes we can go, I don't even know if God hears my prayers anymore. Can I say that maybe we, we've been limiting by God by how we've been asking. Can I encourage you, simply say this. Lord, this is the situation. Lord, this is the problem. I need you. Your will be done. And leave it at that. And look and listen and watch to see what God does. I pray that God blesses you. I pray that things turn around for those that are struggling. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, I know that there are those who are struggling. Lord, I know that there are those who have health issues. There's financial issues. There's, there's all these different things that are going on. Father, we just lift them up to you and say, Lord, your will be done. Act in ways we can't even begin to imagine. In the enormity of your wisdom, your will be done. This day we ask your blessings upon us. Use us where you see fit. But ultimately, Lord, your will be done. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Bless you, church.